Darren Waller now is teamed up and partnered with Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley and a, an improving Giants team that just made it to the divisional round of the playoffs. Can Darren Waller move the needle for this offense with Daniel Jones despite the injuries that he's had in his career? I think that he can. And when I look at Darren Waller, when it comes to his tenure with the Raiders, he was largely successful over the last couple of seasons. And I think you could even go back to not this past season, but just a couple of years ago, 2020 to 2021, he was one of the most productive tight ends in the NFL. I mean, he was right alongside guys like Travis Kelsey. It's just when it came to last year, statistically, he just fell short. And Kev, this was honestly the question that I was going to ask you. When it came to Darren Waller last year, was he dealing with a boatload of injuries? Because I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, he missed a big portion of the season last year. Because when you look at him statistically, Kev, there's a massive drop-off. 2022, he only had 28 catches. I don't yeah. even think he had 500 yards receiving. So there was a massive production drop-off when it came to Darren Waller this past year with the Raiders. But to kind of get back on point, I think when it comes to Darren Waller being on the Giants, I think he's going to solidify that tight end position extremely well. Because you, you look at the tight ends that the Giants have had relatively recently. The biggest name that I can come up with off the top of my head is Evan Ingram. And Evan Ingram is no longer there. He's in Jacksonville. So the biggest thing for me is if can Darren Waller can stay healthy, I think the connection that he can establish with Daniel Jones will be a good one. And Darren Waller has already been in the Giants facility and there's already been communications between Darren Waller and Daniel Jones. And hopefully these two guys can be able to establish a good working relationship this off season and then hopefully build on it. You know, once we get into training camp and then we get into preseason and then when the regular season starts, hopefully these two guys will be able to mesh to the point where they can run an effective offense. It just comes down to whether or not that the Giants offense is going to be able to keep the consistency that they were able to produce at the end of this past year. Because when it comes to the Giants, the Giants offensively have been tough to watch over the last couple of years, but I thought last year was finally a step in the right direction with Brian Dable as their head coach. It finally seemed that Brian Dable was able to get better usage out of Daniel Jones because Daniel Jones statistically for himself had one of, if not his best seasons yet as a professional quarterback. But when you compare Daniel Jones to the rest of the NFL in that quarterback realm, he's relatively subpar. But I think that this is a big move. This was a huge trade for the Giants to be able to pick him up and to finally add some depth to just the overall core whether it be wide receivers or tight end core, this was a move that I think the Giants needed to make to finally bring in some top tier talent into the fold to help out Daniel Jones. Because when you look at this past season with the Giants wide receiving core, they were just riddled with injuries. And Kenny Galladay did not work out. They ended up moving off of him just because his production was just nowhere to be found whatsoever when he was a member of the Giants. So, when it comes to the Giants, they're still figuring out some things, I imagine, going into this year. Uh, they'll probably take away some positive things from this past year. You know, they made it to the divisional round of the playoffs this past year. Um, they finished with a above 500 record. And with Daniel Jones, I think, taking those progressive steps forward as an NFL quarterback, I think Darren Waller is somebody that can immensely help out this Giants offense. I think really at the end of the day, if he's able to produce very similar to what he was able to do in that 2020, 2021 stretch with the Raiders and bring that to the Giants, I think that overall he could bring a huge impact to that Giants offense moving forward. And maybe they even take a, a leap forward to potentially getting 10 to 11 wins next year because of his presence alone. And I think having someone like him in the fold for Daniel Jones to work with, I think it's going to have a very positive effect on not only the offense, but I think to the team as a larger extent. But overall, I think this was a move that the Giants needed to make, and it definitely strengthens that core aspect of the wide receiving core, even though that he's technically considered a tight end. 
So Darren Waller's injury that Kyle had mentioned was a hamstring injury that he had suffered earlier in, I believe, July. That kind of, you know, he was fine. He missed about a month of practice that carried into the regular season. Then he re-aggravated that same hamstring in October. So he missed quite a bit of time in the actual regular season because he just was not available to play. In regards to what he's going to bring to the Giants, I agree with Kyle completely. The biggest thing that I'm looking at is I don't think he's necessarily going to be a definitive big option like he was with Derek Carr and the offense of the Raiders. I think he's going to be more as a decoy, as someone that is going to create a distraction in the middle of the field, which is going to leave a lot of one-on-one matchups for the receivers on the outside. They just re-signed Slayton. I know they're also still pursuing Odell Beckham Jr. They released Kenny Galladay. They signed Paris Campbell, who is a speedster, who I believe will benefit from this signing the most. Because again, someone that blows the top off of a defense, you're going to have a tight end that's usually crossing over the middle of the field in most of those cases. The safety's got to pick their poison. Which one are they going to take? Nine times out of ten, they usually take the tight end that's crossing. But Paris Campbell is known for specifically that. So you may even have Darren Waller open in a lot of instances. But also, like Kyle said, the injury history is going to be the biggest concern. We know what Darren Waller can produce when healthy. I believe he had back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons 2020 and 2021 because last year he was hurt and the year before that he was hurt. So, or should I say, excuse me, was it 2019? It was 2019, 2019 to 2020. I got the years wrong. Yeah, so overall, we know the potential of what Darren can do. We know what Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley can do, but can Daniel Jones do it consistently? And I think now that he will have a definitive option as to someone he can rely on and trust, someone who can go out there and make a difference on the field, and not to mention a tight end is a quarterback's best friend in a lot of situations, especially someone like Daniel Jones, who hasn't been the most gifted at the quarterback position in, I guess, the first four years of his career, even though he got a massive contract this past offseason or this offseason. What Darren Waller can do for the Giants is immediately open up that playbook. It's it's tremendous what Brian Dable is going to be able to do with him and that and that offense, how he's going to scheme it, how he's going to prepare it. The Giants just need to add, I believe, in my personal opinion, one more playmaker on the outside. I'm not saying go break the bank on a big wide receiver. Maybe make a trade for Allen Robinson. Maybe you go out there and you go under the radar and you, you try to get D-Hop out of Arizona. Maybe you try to get Odell Beckham for a discounted price. I don't know. I have no idea. Go get one more person. Then you will have someone to compliment Waller. You have Saquon Barkley in the backfield. I think the Giants can make some noise. I don't know about getting to where they got to last year necessarily, but if they can use this signing to catapult the offense, sky's the limit. 